Hello, everybody. My name is Rodgon, and welcome to another one of my videos. In this video today, I am going to walk you guys through a couple steps on how to find your own path as an artist. Maybe you're uncertain on what you want to do when you get out of school, or maybe you never went to school and you want to know how to actually find what you are good at and how to actually proceed and make money with your passion. So we're going to go through a couple steps and we're going to just break it down in simple ways so you guys can actually start analyzing what you guys are good at and then you guys can decide on the path that you guys want to take. So, my step number one is to try out as many types of art as possible. If you guys already have an idea of what you guys want to go into, let's say some of the bigger ones are graphic design, animation, illustration, 3D modeling, 3D stuff, you know, in general, there's a bunch of different career paths. But you never really know what you're going to end up liking and what you're going to be end up doing until you try out a lot of different ones. I'm going to give you guys an example. My example, because that's the only way that I can, you know, measure it. I started when I was about 18. I started drawing, period, when I was about 18. Uh, during this time, I decided to go to art school, and I didn't really know what different kinds of art were. I just wanted to draw. So I ended up taking a lot of 3D animation, which I ended up really liking. And I ended up taking a lot of video classes and I ended up taking a lot of sculpting classes and painting and life drawing and everything. So I try to experience as much as I could while I was in school. I was really, 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 really passionate about 3D modeling and texturing and animation. That was my goal. When I graduated, I wanted to do that. Life happened, and after graduating, I never really followed through on that. I ended up doing a lot of work for graphic design jobs and marketing and, you know, social media stuff, freelancing, caricature art. I oh, mean, I did everything. I did everything from graphic design to apparel to impart caricatures, everything. And what I ended up, you know, finding that I liked the most out of everything was drawing. So I ended up in jobs that allowed me to do this because I searched for them. So I ended up in design firms and I ended up, you know, in other places that allowed me to just draw all day and follow what I wanted. So my first step suggestion is to just experience as much as you can so you guys actually know exactly what you want to do. So, once you go through that, you got to go to step number two. Find a way to make money with what you love to do. So, to do this, in my example, I scourged the internet with for different ways that I could make money drawing. And it wasn't just, I just wanted to draw things that I liked. Obviously, you know, when you work for a company, it's not always the case you're going to have to draw what they tell you to draw. But, you know, I found that freelancing for skateboard companies and freelancing for, you know, different companies like that helped me achieve my goal. But the way I started was to scourge every single internet forum and every single, you know, place that I could possibly conjure in my head that would actually allow me to make money doing what I wanted. I ended up well, I, I used to love skating a lot, so I wanted to incorporate that too. So I joined a website called Silverfish Longboarding. And oddly enough, when I uploaded a lot of my work, all, some companies were interested. They wanted me to draw some stuff for them. I ended up, by like the end of like two years that I was on that thing, I ended up working with like 50 or so companies. I made a name for myself. I made a reputation for myself. I joined every contest that I could possibly join and I tried to win it. And I ended up making a decent reputation for myself, which allowed me to take it to other venues that weren't skating. I took it to, you know, just 
everything. Everything from companies that did snowboarding, companies that did, you know, apparel for just random stuff. Uh, I can't say some of the names because of non-disclosure agreements, but I ended up working with a ridiculous amount of companies simply because I took the time to search for that work and search for a way to make myself noticed. So I suggest that you guys do that. So after you know, you realize a couple ways that you guys can actually make money with this, you need to go to step number three. Step number three is learn everything you can about that market or community. If you're going to be a sculptor, you need to know how much the average cost of a sculpture costs, what you can actually do with a sculpture. Can you sell it to Hallmark? Can you sell it to toy companies? Can you you know, find different ways that you can actually use the skills that you know in order to make a profit for yourself. See how wide your margin is within your market and see if, how much of that you can capitalize in. If you're an illustrator, you have a lot of space to play with. You can go to any company and offer your services because every single company needs art. That little coffee shop across the street, you know, from where you like to, you know, buy your stuff, that needs banners, that needs flyers, that place needs a website, they need art in general. So if you're an illustrator like I am, you can always put the groundwork and actually go contact as many companies as you want. And oddly enough, some of them will want your services because if you have the passion for it, odds are that you're a little bit better than most of the people out there, and therefore you can actually get jobs like that. But you need to know how much to charge, you need to know how much the average cost of everything is, what clients expect from you, what you are expected to deliver as an artist, and just so you don't get scammed, just so you don't get taken advantage of, and this is a very important step. You guys need to be aware and be informed of every aspect of your passion or the career that you guys, essentially it's a career. That's your path. That's what you guys want to do. So you guys got to be able to know every single aspect of it. Pardon my doggies. They're, they're barking because cars. But if you guys are able to get all this information out, if you guys are able to get all this information from websites, from forums, from other people, message artists that you guys already know that are already in the field, odds are they'll answer and give you guys some insight. Maybe you'll even make a friend that could help you in. Connections and knowledge are what make an artist actually thrive. Not necessarily their skill. Yes, you have to have a certain amount of skill. But you need to be able to know everything about it. Knowledge is power. And in a lot of cases, knowledge alone will be able to get you indoors that your skill alone won't be able to get. But step number four, find a niche within your market. What do I mean by that? Find a corner of that market that suits you and your style. For me... At first, it was skateboarding. I contacted every single skateboard company. And since I skated, I was able to get into those places even easier than somebody that didn't skate, that didn't know the market, that didn't know other skaters. So find your niche. That's probably the hardest step because it's going to take a lot of time to determine what you like. Some hints to do it, though, is to just Find what you like to do at first, and then find other avenues that you enjoy doing. So let's say that you like crocheting, but you also like web design. So, well, there you go. You have a market niche. You can always just go market to the people that do what you want. And it's a good way to start. May say you like vinyl toys, or maybe you just like making apps. You know, it doesn't matter what type of thing it is. Just find little things here and there that you really like and then just pursue them. Pursue that little corner of that market and make it yours. And 
it'll help you out immensely rather than just going for random jobs here and there that you're not really passionate about. Step number five. Never stop pushing what you love. Make it your life. If you want to do this, it can't be half done. You can't play at being an artist. It won't be easy. It won't be simple. Push it and push it and move forward and remember that this is what you wanted. This is the type of work that you want to do. If you just wanted to do art because it's easy, I'm sorry to tell you this, but it's not the case. I've met so many artists that have failed and given up because they just don't push it enough. They just go halfway. They expect it to be easy. They expect it to be given to them. And that's not the case. You have to make sure that you succeed. No one else is going to do it for you. And you need to actually put the effort in. The effort that you put in is going to be reflected on how you proceed as an artist in your life. If you just feel happy, you know, working for a nine to five job, you know, with a little design firm, that's great. That's awesome. You got to where you wanted and that's great. For example, me, I had a super comfy nine to five job at a design firm for about two and a half years recently. I could have just stayed there. I could have just stayed there and been, you know, I would have been happy. But I was bored because I'm a person that just likes to do new things, more stuff, make it a challenge for myself. And I don't just want to collect a paycheck every two weeks. I want to know that I'm leaving a legacy. And that's why I push all these videos. That's why I just try to get myself out there as much as possible. So you guys can take me as an example. Maybe I'm not the best example, I'm not the most popular person out there, but I'm trying to become a person that's recognized for doing work that allows other people to learn and actually help out in the community. I'm trying to give back what I've gotten over the years. So, in short, step five, just always move forward. Never stop, don't be complacent, and then... That is what's going to take you to a whole other level that most people never even achieve. And the most important step, step number six. This is the most important step in anybody's art career. And you guys should never, ever forget this. It should be fun. This career... You didn't choose it at first because of the money. You didn't go into it, you know, knowing that you were going to get that $100,000 a year job or, you know, benefits or security. No, you went into it because you had a passion in your brain that you wanted to get out and you wanted to share with the world. You wanted to become that next Walt Disney. You wanted to be the next Pixar or you wanted to work for Pixar or DreamWorks or whatever your dream is. It's supposed to be fun. And that's the only greatest benefit of being an artist. It's that our work, regardless of what we're doing, is fun. So don't ever forget that. The moment you forget that, everything else is obsolete. All the work you put in, obsolete. Because you know what? It's not fun. So if you ever end up in a job where you're bored out of your mind, you are not having fun with it, and you're an artist, it's going to kill you. It is going to kill your creativity, and eventually it's going to kill your art career. This goes hand in hand with step five. Don't stop pushing. And just remember that it's supposed to be fun. So, I'll leave you guys with that. I hope you guys actually learned a little bit more. Hopefully my puppies weren't too distracting barking in the background. But I hope you guys learned a little bit of how I think that you should find your path. There's a million different ways and you can find a different artist. You know, every single artist is going to tell you something different. So this is just the way that I see it. 
the way that hopefully it helps you guys find your way. And, you know, I hope it works. Hopefully it helps even one of you guys out. If it does, I'll be more than happy. All right, guys. If you guys like what I've been doing so far, you know the drill. There's a like and subscribe button in the bottom. And I will catch you guys in the next video.